In this video, we're going to finish up our discussion on the scientific process by looking at some very basic terms uh, within science that we have to understand before we move any further in our lecture. Scientific process involves uh, some language, language of science we like to call it. And the language of science is very specific and for that reason we have to understand the nuances or the differences, the slight differences between certain words. So there are two words you want to focus on. You want to focus on this idea of a scientific theory versus a scientific law. Two things that often get mixed up. One thing you want to make sure you understand is that a hypothesis, remember hypothesis was that proposed tentative explanation, it is not a theory. So we can write not hypothesis, okay, and vice versa, okay, a hypothesis is not a theory, and a theory is not a hypothesis. So what is the confusion here? What theory really means is that it's a hypothesis, yes, but there's the nuance that we have to talk about. Hypothesis with significant support. This is key here, with significant support from testing. So the theory of evolution is not simply a hypothesis. That is an insult, let's say, to the theory of evolution because it doesn't state that if you just say that the evolution is just a hypothesis, you know, it's nothing, nothing serious, it's a hypothesis. You're stating that it doesn't have significant support from testing when in fact something like the theory of evolution has tons of testing behind it that helps us understand that it is a strongly supported hypothesis, otherwise known as a theory. So what is the difference then between a theory and a law? Where does that difference come in? Well, the law, a scientific law, is defined as a statement. Notice how we don't even say hypothesis anymore. Because remember, a hypothesis was a proposed tentative explanation. It has the ability to change and be altered based off of experimentation. A theory just has a lot of support based off of experimentation. But a law starts off as a statement. Statement of what? It's a statement of what always... Notice the terminology already. Some more pot, some much more strong, uh, aggressive terminology that we see here. Statement of what always occurs under certain circumstances. So there are certain circumstances that are announced and the law, scientific law, states that this is what's going to happen. A law always has an observable pattern that happens over and over and over and over again and we use science to explain this pattern, to explain this law. Science explains why this law happens the way it does. Things like the law of thermodynamics might come to mind. These are laws or the law of gravity. These are laws that have been shown over and over and over and over and over again to have the same pattern explained the same way and always occurring under the same circumstances the same exact time same exact way excuse me so this is our language of science that we want to finish off our talk about the scientific process with just understand that a hypothesis does not mean that it's a theory and a theory is not a hypothesis what a theory is is a hypothesis but but, big but here, we have to make sure that, that hypothesis has significant support from testing. And lastly, a law is a statement of what always occurs under certain circumstances. Think of the law of gravity. The law of gravity is basically, we can say that if I take something and drop it from a certain height, it will fall, right? That is going to happen over and over and over again. Science explains why many different physical components that are involved in that, but most importantly, it's an observable pattern that repeats the same results over and over and over again. That's a law, and now we understand a theory, and now we have a better idea of the language of science.